Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us move on to the next concepts of module 4 that is digital communication part. So here in this video, we are going to discuss radio signal transmission, LTE modulation scheme, multiple access techniques, FDD and TDD modes and multipath and then fading. In the previous video, we have seen ASK, FSK and PSK. These three are digital modulation schemes. So ASK is amplitude shift keying, FSK is frequency shift keying and PSK is phase shift keying. In this video, let us move on to radio signal transmission where wireless transmission system uses the radio signals for the transmission. So here, transmitter accepts stream of bits as input. So these stream of bits are going to be obtained from the application software. So stream of bits is an input means this is an digital communication. So here, the modulation and encoding are the methods we are going to adapt for transmitting through a wireless transmission system. This is going to happen in two stages. In the first stage, we will be having a modulator. In the next stage, we will be having a transmitter. Here also, we will be using an analog transmitter. Analog transmitter in the sense, we will be using an analog carrier wave. That carrier wave we are going to use will be in the radio frequency range. So that's why we are calling it as radio signal transmission. What happens in the modulator? This modulator is going to accept the incoming bits. Since it is a digital communication, we are going to take the stream of bits and it is going to compute symbols. It will be called as symbols. So these symbols will be having an amplitude and phase parameter. So this will be given to the transmitter. This transmitter is going to generate the radio wave by taking the high frequency carrier. So let us see what is the process it is going to take. So for that process, here we are going to use QPSK. Means the advanced phase shift keying that will be called as quadrature phase shift keying. In the previous video, we have seen what is phase shift keying and how actually the modulation is going to happen. In this video, let us see QPSK, the technique. Here, the wireless communication transmitter is going to get the values like phase as well as amplitude. The phase of the signals for these corresponding bit bits will be 45 degree, 135 degree, 215 degree and 315 degree. Let us understand this. A QPSK modulator takes two bits at a time. You can recall PSK which we have seen in the previous video, it takes single bits. Quadrature phase shift keying modulator takes two bits at a time. Suppose if, I, if, if my bits are something like this, it is going to take two bits at a time for the processing. Suppose if we have 0, 0, the phase will be allocated as 45 degree. If it is 1, 0, the phase will be allocated as 135 degree. If it is 1, 1, it is 225 degree and 0, 1, it is 315 degree. So to understand this, you can see this expression. It will be having an in-phase component as well as a quadrature component. So in-phase component will be I. You can see here in this diagram. This I indicates the in-phase component. It is like a cos wave, A cos phi, where A is an amplitude and phi is an phase. Similarly, it will be having a quadrature component. That is an imaginary part here in the y-axis you can see. This will be again having a amplitude and phi will be a phase. So by looking at this diagram, you can observe how actually the wave will be generated for set of two bits. For one zero, you can see the wave is starting from here since it is a cast wave, a 45 degree from the 45 degree point, it is going to start and go move on. When the input is 0, 0, it should start from S 135 degree. It will go S 135 degree phase shift. And similarly, 215 degree as well as 315 degree for the different combinations. Since it is taking two bits at a time, we will be getting only four combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 are the four combinations we are going to get. So for those combinations, the phase shift is going to be set like this. The phase of the cast wave is going to be changed and starting with that phase shift. This is how QPSK is going to modulate the signals in an analog transmitter. So this is what the transmitted radio wave you can observe. This will be showing for the corresponding two bit input values. Then LTE modulation scheme. LTE in the sense it is a long term evolution the long term evolution generally marked as that is 4G. This is the standard wireless communication through mobile. So mobile device communication in 4G will be called as LTE. This LTE uses four schemes such as 
वन इज बाइनरी फेस शिफ्ट की अनदर वन इज क्वाड्रेचर फेस शिफ्ट की देन सिक्सटीन क्वाड्रेचर आम्पलीट्यूड मॉडलेशन एंड देन सिक्सटी फोर क्वाड्रेचर आम्पलीट्यूड मॉडलेशन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सिक्सटीन क्यू एम दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सिक्सटी फोर क्यू एम हियर वाट एपन्स इन द बाइनरी फेस शिफ्ट की वन बिट एट ए टाइम यूजिंग टू स्टेट्स सच एज जीरो एंड वन वी आर गोइंग टू टेक वन बिट एट ए टाइम एंड रिप्रेजेंटिंग द फेजस फॉर जीरो इट इज जीरो डिग्री एंड फॉर वन इट इज टेकिंग वन एटी डिग्री फेस शिफ्ट एंड द सिग्नल एम्पलीट्यूड्स आर रिप्रेजेंटेड एज प्लस वन एंड माइनस वन दिस इज बाइनरी फेस शिफ्ट की क्वाड्रेचर फेस शिफ्ट की एज वी हैव सीन सो फार टू बिट्स आर गोइंग टू बी टेकन एट ए टाइम सो वी आर गोइंग टू गेट फोर स्टेट्स दट इज जीरो 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 वन वन जीरो एंड वन वन Correspondingly, phases are given by 45 degree, 135 degree, 225 degree, and 315 degree for the signals. And similarly, 16 quadrature amplitude modulation it takes four bits at a time. It is going to take four bits at a time, and 16 states it is going to get to represent the amplitude and a phase. And similarly, 64 quadrature amplitude modulation takes six bits at a time. So these are the four methods, or we can say four modulation schemes. LTE scheme is going to adapt. You can observe here the diagrams for the BPSK. It is only take one and zero. This is what the wave look like for one transmitting and zero to transmit zero. This is what QPSK. This is sixteen QAM. It is sixty-four QAM. Next, we have multiple access techniques. Multiple access in the sense it is a technique to provide the communication service to multiple users over a same channel. If we have a single channel. we need to transmit the data with respect to the multiple users are concerned how we can achieve that through a multiple access techniques there are three multiple access techniques one is time division multiple access another one is frequency division multiple access another one is code division multiple access you can observe here it is represented in a 3d structure this is frequency this is time and this is power in tdma what happens the time are going to be allotted for each and every transaction this will be allotted with separate time this will be allotted with the time this will be allotted with the time similarly all the transactions or the communications will be allotted with time one after the other they are going to communicate in a same frequency channel what is fdme fdme is frequency division we are going to divide the frequencies into slots with respect to the different frequencies are concerned these are going to communicate at the same time here time is same but different frequencies are going to be allocated for the communication in cdma at the same frequency and also at the same time using different coding methods all the communications are going to happen in the same time this is what fdma that is frequency division multiple access time division multiple access tdma and code division multiple access look like so here you can see fdma this is you going to use the available frequency band that is bandwidth will be splitted into smaller frequency channels and different channels are assigned to different users there are different frequencies for different users we can say and here the carriers are separated by guard bands if this is the bandwidth we have we are going to allocate this frequency for user 1 this frequency for user 2 this frequency for user 3 we need to have a gap in between these two that will be called as guard bands similarly next one is tdma tdma uses same frequency band for with different times means every user is permitted to transmit only specific time slot using a common frequency band here the frequency is same time slots are going to be allocated for different users to communicate that is what tdma here gsm uses the combination of both tdma as well as fdma techniques and lte uses orthogonal fdma technique and then cdma in this cdma mobiles receive signals on the same carrier frequency at same time frequency is also same and different mobiles are going to get the received signals at the same time but signals are labeled here using coding methods which allows multiple mobiles to separate its own signals from others a coding method is adopted here so 3g technology uses this method cdma to communicate with a multiple access technique then fdd and tdd modes we need to understand what is duplexing first duplexing in the sense we are allowing the user here the communication between the base band as well as the mobile is going to be considered base station in the sense it is a tower 
generally we are going to refer this as a tower and here is the user mobile end what is duplexing means it is going to allow users to send information simultaneously to the base station while receiving the information from the base station we are sending the information from the mobile phone will be called as uplink and we are getting the information from the base station will be called as downlink so these two are going to happen in between the user and the base station simultaneously then it will be called as duplexing so this wireless telephony applies duplexing techniques while talking and listening is enabled at a time so the first thing is frequency division duplexing here what happens frequency will be allotted for uplink as well as downlink so there are two different frequencies for a single user so one mobile phone user will be allocated with uplink frequency as well as downlink frequency so there are two frequencies allocated for a single user here again we need to use a guard band to separate the transmitting as well as receiving signals so that these two are not going to interfere each other so FDD is suitable for radio communication systems. It uses frequency for uplink as well as downlink. This is FDD that is frequency division duplexing. Next we will be having TDD that is time division duplexing. Here what happens again the base station and the mobile will transmit and receive the data on the same carrier frequency but in different time slots and time slots could be dynamically allocated separated by a guard band again the time difference and guard period ensures that uplink and downlink transmissions do not collide obviously there are different times allocated for that once the uplink has done then downlink will be happening and again uplink as well as downlink these two are separated with the time slots with a guard band here tdd is more suitable for fixed wireless systems it uses time for uplink as well as downlink then multipath and fading what do you mean by multipath and what is fading we need to understand so since the wireless communication or radio transmission is related to the light transmission whatever the light is going to suffer or whatever the behavior light is going to take place again radio signal is going to take place the same phenomena so as a result here reflections are going to happen as well as diffractions are going to happen so this phenomena of reflections and diffractions taken place between the signals will be called as multipath so one signal may hit a object and it may take this path this will be called as a multipath if peaks of the incoming rays coincide then they will reinforce each other this situation will be called as constructive interference you can see in this diagram this is wave x this is wave y these two are going to coincide if the phases are going to match then it will be added up so that is what once these two are going to coincide the resultant wave will be the addition of these two this will be called as constructive interference what happens if the peak of one ray coincide with the another this results in destructive interference and they are going to cancel if this is what the phase of the signal and this is what the 180 degree phase shifted signal if these two are going to collide then the result will be obviously zero so these two are get cancelled each other this will be called as destructive interference and this will be called as constructive interference and what is fading due to the destructive interference the received signal power is going to drop destructive interference in the sense the two signals will be having different phases obviously those two are going to cancel each other if the phases are different not exactly 180 degree what happens power drop will be occurred so power reduces to a low level power so this concept will be called as fading they are going to fade it out so here we need to understand two concepts one is core and time as well as core and bandwidth when the amplitude and phase of the received signal varies with respect to the time scale this will be called as coherence time and if the carrier frequency changes when the radio signals are going to coincide and here what changes frequency changes with once the frequency changes wavelength also changes here the amplitude and phase of the signal vary over a frequency scale then it will be called as coherence bandwidth so coherence bandwidth is bc and coherence time is tc tc will be indicated as 1 divided by fd fd is mobile doppler frequency this is going to occur when the mobile phone is transmitting from one place to other place it is traveling from one place to other place this coherence time and coherence bandwidth comes into picture 
obviously fading is going to occur so amplitude and phase of the signal is going to vary obviously if it is over the time scale it will be called as coherence time if it is with respect to the frequency scale we are going to call it as coherence bandwidth the two expressions here for tc as well as bc here you can observe this is coherent time indication this is coherence bandwidth indication in the next video let us see the error management when we are transmitting the digital signals and antennas how they are going to receive and transmit the data thank you